So we are at the Mitur village in Karnataka, 101 kilometers away from the hustle and bustle of the city and we are celebrating the One Health program. Now, who better than the expert on this program can tell you? Well, I have uh, Dr. Sindhura Ganpati. He is from the uh, Office of Principal Scientific Advisor of Government of India. And today he will throw some light on the One Health program and what are the initiatives Government of India is taking. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure I can call myself an expert because there are many experts in this space who can uh, contribute. But I can happily speak about why One Health is important. Uh, this setting is a nice reminder where we coexist in the environment we live in, that is humans, animals, both domesticated and wild species and its environment and its integrated nature, which we have learned now through hard lessons on right. paying attention, uh, being able to coexist uh, more seamlessly to prevent diseases and improve healthy living. Mm -hmm. uh, both of physical as well as mental uh, well -being. way, well-being, yeah. Right, right. So, sir, uh, I'm told that now Government of India is actively pursuing and uh, going to initiate a One Health program across India. So, if you could throw some light on what are the steps which uh, the Government of India is taking in this regard? Yeah, no, you, I would uh, point to many of the uh, efforts that are already happening in this space across various departments. Mm -hmm. um, whether it is in the science funding agencies, whether it is in the human health space, whether it is uh, in the animal health or environmental space. And the effort is to coordinate it better and bring out the synergies uh, better. And, right. uh, and even at the state levels, many efforts are happening in the state of Karnataka, obviously. You probably have read about launch of this uh, Bangalore Science and Technology Cluster, mm -hmm. which is uh, try trying to focus on One Health as an activity. Right. So ultimately, uh, how do we bring about various planned ongoing uh, activities to be more synergistic mm -hmm. towards uh, this goal of integrated uh, disease control, improving uh, well-being uh, right. and uh, bringing all these sectors together for this. Right. So when did this awareness came, sir? Like before <coughs> COVID, there was uh, no such concept actually about One Health in terms of uh, uh, initiatives which uh, uh, government or private sector was taking. <coughs> now that we are seeing a lot of active participation from the companies as well as uh, from the public uh, side. So what are the things which you feel we need to do as a general public to contribute towards the One Health program? It's an interesting question when people ask, when did we start thinking about One Health? It depends on how far back you want to go. Right. Because uh, in Indian uh, uh, context. history context, we have always had One Health. So many of the many of the uh, uh, prominent scientists, philosophers, saints, so-called, mm -hmm. they were linguists, physicians, scientists, uh, and they worked on both human health, thought about and worked on human health as well as animal right. and environmental health. Right. right. So it was always uh, uh, yeah. integrated in that way. It, mm -hmm. You could see that parallel even in Greek. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. ancient Greek, right. uh, Greece. Um, so what has happened is specialization and development, we have uh, become more specialized and that has led to divergence of the fields. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, there are many uh, efforts that have been happening over the last uh, several years, but really crystallization of this and it's happening. The, yes, mm -hmm. it uh, and also public con public conscience uh, right. feeling the need for taking this up. Mm -hmm. I think COVID has really uh, brought this to the forefront. Uh, I would say. Right. Right. So um, our audience at Biotechnica, most of them are young scientists or young professionals who aspire to become scientists in this domain of life sciences. And you're yourself a postdoc in pharmacology. I'm told. So, uh, what will be your message to these youngsters uh, about their career or life, if you could say some lines? Yeah. So um, in my own career, I studied veterinary science. I did basic science. Uh, I worked in human health. Now I'm working in one health uh, area, including wildlife uh, disease management in India, etc. So what I've come to learn is it doesn't matter what 
profession you take or what specialization you take. Uh, mm -hmm. You could be in uh, uh, certain aspect of molecular biology or assay development or electrophysiology, which I was doing. It doesn't matter what you are doing. Right. Oftentimes, uh, obviously, you have to do well in that focused area. But it actually helps to think about the interfaces with other disciplines. Because right. if you look at any innovation or major uh, major discoveries, mm -hmm. they often happen in the interface between disciplines. Mm -hmm. And many of the Nobel laureates were physicists who worked on biology right. uh, or in medicine mm -hmm. uh, and vice versa. So uh, my own learning has been, and if that is of any benefit to uh, the youngsters, it is uh, thinking about those discipline, overlaps. the interface and overlap between different disciplines, whether it is mathematics and biology or physics and biology or social sciences and biology or biotechnology with pretty much every other aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, that is going to be, it has been and will continue to be the forefront of innovation and also of career choices. So, mm -hmm. uh, if that can be of any help, uh, that thought process, I would be, I would be very happy to have shared that. If that has been my personal experience as well. Wonderful. So, sir, if if a youngster has to define success for himself, what should it be? Or herself? Or herself? <laughs> yeah, herself. Uh, Whatever the person de uh, defines, so it is quite challenging to define success for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And actually, whatever it does not matter what the answer is. Right. Whether it is financial, whether it is fame, whether it is awards, whether it is social so we, we well-being. Uh, oftentimes, what we define may not end up be the same thing after two years, three years, ten years, fifteen years. You may look back and keep evolving. Right. So, uh, it is quite uh, irrelevant in the big scheme of things, what anyone des describes mm -hmm. or defines success for oneself. Mm -hmm. uh, but defining is important and pursuing that is important and adapting and evolving because like mm -hmm. life, we all evolve, our thoughts evolve right. and that is true of the <laughs> message of One Health as well. So, there is constant co-evolution amongst these uh, amongst our surroundings and that is true of us inside as well. Right. Yeah. So, sir, uh, you have worked in the um, various settings actually in your life and now that you are working very closely with the top-notch uh, leadership of the country, uh, how, what are the changes or differences you were seeing? How do the government of India operates in terms of your experience if you compare and if you could throw some light on that? I, I have been amazed at the quality of thinking that is uh, at play mm -hmm. and the people I get to work with right. and the passion they bring to actually solve the problems mm -hmm. and the amount of effort that they put. Mm -hmm. And I also being at the having to work on these, it's easy to uh, complain and when things don't happen, but when trying to improve things and build things, Mm -hmm. I also understand the challenges mm -hmm. on building it and doing it in a appreciate uh, those people's efforts right. in uh, trying to make this happen. Sure. And obviously, these things don't exist in isolation. Right? Right. So the government doesn't exist in isolation. So government itself is an ecosystem that consists of what people may define as core government that mm -hmm. interplays and. Uh, evolves it together right. with uh, private sector, non-governmental sector, academic uh, settings and there is a constant exchange of both people and thoughts and that's what I have been seeing and I hope that continues to grow because that also brings in thinking ideas and expertise and uh, is the best way to move forward together. Wonderful. That was a great insight. So, uh, that was Dr. Sindh Sindhura Ganpati. He is from the Office of Pr Principal Scientific Advisor of Government of India. And he shared some wonderful insights on career, success, One Health program and various experiences he's undergoing right now in the Government of India. So, I wish you all the best, sir. And to all our subscribers, thank you so much for watching. See you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining. Bye-bye. Thank you and wish you all the best.